Ta-da! You're starting early. Starting early. Expecting a number of people. Uh, do you, you know, did you ever meet Sean Lewis? Do you know anything about him? Don't know his name at all. He's okay, so freshman. back in 1993, I got hired by uh, Nutmeg Mills to work with their art department on how to design and separate for a black shirt. And so they had seven creative artists and they had uh, 20 production artists. And the um, goal was to train the creative artists to do the original artwork so that the production artists could then break it down. Well, in training them on how to do the artwork, it was already broken down. So we never got to work with the production department, but everything was done from the creative department. And Sean is one of those who just knows Photoshop inside out. I mean, even back then, he was the kind of guy who could get on the computer and say, watch this and hit certain keys that the people who wrote the program snuck in there, but it wasn't for the general public. He knew all of those tricks and is just amazing um, in terms of what he knows about Photoshop. His issue back then, and I'm sure he will find his way on here, was getting to work on time. And so Nutmeg <laughs> being the size that it is, and of course being as young as he was back then, <laughs> just got to the point where um, they, they gave warning after warning after warning and they finally just had to cut him loose because it was setting up a bad precedent for the rest of the department. So when he did that, I hired him as a consultant and sent him around to a number of shops for a large amount of money per day. And after about a month, he said, man, this is just too wearing. I, I don't think I want to do this anymore. He made more in that month than he normally did in about six months. And it was like, what do you mean you don't want to? <laughs> it's too much work, really? Put your checkbook away. So uh, he then kicked around for quite a number of years. I, I don't know if he ever worked for uh, Stuart Miller, uh, but Stuart stole most of the artists that I trained at Nutmeg. For, to the shop that he was working with at that time. And eventually, uh, I understand Sean ended up uh, actually in Thailand, where he just got back from there not too long ago, working there for a number of years. And is either, I think he's either interviewed or is about to uh, for some companies um, to see if he can basically nail down a position. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I have no idea exactly where he is on that, but. Uh, find out once he gets on. Hopefully he's not on time this time. There are some people who are just um, good about certain things and others that are, eh, but I, I have a feeling he'll be on just fine. But uh, if I don't see him soon, I will uh, email him quickly. Call him up, yeah. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Good. Expecting a big snowstorm tomorrow morning. I know. Well, we have uh, snow coming this afternoon and um, some pretty frigid temperatures at night. The, they've redone the daytime temperature. Initially, it was set for like 12 to 14 degrees. They've now moved it up to like 31, which I'm thrilled cool. about. And uh, nighttime lows, early predictions were minus four. And I don't know where they are now, but far better than that anyway. Um, let me see. Hello, Yosta. Huh? I'm just saying hello to our sweet. Yosta. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. We had a good. Was, yeah. We had a good bad. storm this weekend. You have a storm coming also? No, Yosta? we had it this weekend. Ah. Uh, well, we've had snow off and on for the last weeks, or so we have snow coming today. Actually, our cold day is Thursday. It's going to be minus one for the low and. 24 for the high, actually not too bad when all is said and done. So I can't really complain about that. Yeah, it was, as long it was, as it happens at night, I don't care. Uh, yeah, it was quite windy here. Uh, our flagpole looked like um, uh, offshore um, fishing <laughs> stick <laughs> with with a big bait on. Flag is frozen out, out straight. Uh, and the pole was kind of bend. Ah, and um, it got caught that way. Yep, uh, and, and we have, because um, I live and work on a farm, 
we mm -hmm. have these big balls of um, food for for the animals you know wrapped in plastic look like uh -huh. giant eggs mm -hmm. yeah and uh, yeah they, they were shaking like this you know and it's 900 kilo and they are shaking like this huh. yeah. so it was windy hi dane hey and you made it huh yeah yeah I, i'll be uh I gotta finish up this. I'll be painting and listening and jumping in every now and again. But um, um, we're still waiting for Sean. I was mentioning to uh, Richard about his uh, lack of ability to hit things on time. <laughs> He's got one more minute. Yeah, know, well, you know, it's Sean. I know, and you know, it, it, you know him, so oh, yeah. you know what to expect. It's kind of like if he shows up really on time, that'd be unusual, but that's okay. That would be normal. He's jet lagged from Thailand. Yeah, right. So, um, the Long Beach show, just yeah. in case you're curious, I had over 40 people in each of my uh, day long workshops, and yeah. over 40 in my seminar. The, the attendance, quote unquote, wasn't bad. And talking to some of the suppliers, what, what they didn't have were those who came just to chat. So, those who did show up were there right. for a reason. But of course, uh, as far as exhibitors went, that was definitely hurting. Um, Rock was really the only major print company, uh, screen print manufacturer. I don't know, Richard, do you see any of the ink companies besides those from overseas? Nope. None. I mean, um, I was had, in ink. You had Bob Wellen, Bob Wellen running the new Inkwin. Yes. Wow. And I spent time there because uh, they're opening up a They've opened a facility in Henderson, Nevada. But uh, other than that, I didn't see any ink companies, but I didn't, the show was so uh, much of a garment company show. You know, you had some of the bigger guys there. Other than that, really not uh, tremendous amounts of things to, for me to go around and see. Yeah, I would have been there if it wasn't for the COVID stuff, you know. <laughs> Got sick, well, didn't go. It's the way it works. Yeah. Well, you're looking uh, on the healthier side there. Oh, yeah, I'm doing better, right? Good to yeah, go. You lose some weight during the whole thing? I did. Well, there you go. That's a, that's the benefit of it, huh? <laughs> if you want to call that a benefit. Right. <laughs> Dang, look what I got. Whack off. Hey. Yeah. Nice. So now, it's not, now it starts on the real. Yeah. <laughs> Good deal. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm painting on one right now. Yep. <laughs> All right. I think I probably should um, shoot. Better shoot. email them. I'm going to do that right now. I'll text him. Oh. <laughs> That's right. When I saw that email roll through today, I said, if Sean's there. Let me go see if I can sit in for a few minutes. <laughs> hey, you know. There are those who uh, do things on time. I'm usually not one of them. Oh, I just got a message from Sean that he won't be able to attend. Uh oh, mm. I want my surprising. money back. Really? <laughs> what the heck? Yeah, we, we got Dane. <laughs> That's right. Sorry, Dane. You're it. I'm, I'm it. Oh, uh, boy. I hope it's uh, I hope it's not too bad. Whatever is keeping him out. Hey, I can tell you what you know a little bit about him. Um, Charlie introduced us. God, what ninety. 1993 or something, man. It's been Nine, 1993, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Charlie and I were working. He was teaching me how to do black shirt steps, right? And I was airbrushing on Mylar and shooting them on stat cameras and all that old school stuff. Oh, yeah. And I said, man, Charlie, this is great, but how do I do this in Photoshop? I know there's a way to do this in Photoshop, <laughs> right? And he's like, hell, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm, you know, to this day, I don't know how to do that. That's all right. right. Well, yeah, sorry that he won't be on. Uh, yeah. That's really annoying, but 
it's nothing like getting a message at, uh, let me see what one time I got. Go message. time, right? Right, one minute uh, after go time. <laughs> oh, uh, sorry. Right. Yeah, well, if you yeah, know Sean, and, it's sort of kind of how he rolls. Hey, I got the message at three minutes before you're supposed to be on. Oh, well, uh, that's all right. You oh, well. Stuff to do. So uh, as long as you're on, we'll just throw it all on your lap. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to kind of hang out in the background, do a little painting and, and watch and listen. Well, and you can, you know, you can go ahead and paint. I mean, that's fine. You know, we'll just ask you questions and and see if uh, we can't get anything going that way. So you're not coming to the DAX show, obviously. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, no, I got, I got you know, too much going on. And if I can not travel quite as much, I'm uh, I'm all over that. Well... You were never big on travel anyway, so. I mean, you know, wasn't my favorite thing in the world. I, you know, I like my wife, kind of dig my house, so, you know. <laughs> I, I understand. And, uh, anyway. I'll be in Atlantic City, so hopefully that's going to be a big one. I'm kind of looking forward to that. I have a feeling it's going to be, my, well, of course, uh, when we did it in uh, September or in August, that was the first show that uh, Impressions or yeah. yeah, the first impressions expo of the year. So I think this time, because of Long Beach and because of companies like Rock dominating it, um, I have a feeling that companies like MR and MHM have to be there, uh, even if it's just with a small amount of product. Yeah. Um, I think if they, of course, you know, the issue with, with um, MR is delivery time. I don't know where they're up to, but they were at like 30 weeks, 33, I think is where they hit. Mm -hmm. Kind of difficult to come to a show and say, yeah, we can deliver in about seven months. Good to you next year. No problem. You know, no problem. I mean, you know, <laughs> I know you need it tomorrow, but you'll probably still need it in seven months or six months or whatever it is. Right. And I know uh, I'm working with MHM a bit also, and they're able to deliver like four machines a month. I don't know how much they already have backlogged or whatever, but um, Rock, I think, is in probably the best shape and um, good for them because they're going to be able to take advantage of that. Yeah, man, that's for sure. So uh, I don't know. I mean, if I were one of the machine companies, even if it took seven months to deliver, I'd still have my face there. Yeah. Or at least walk around. Well, you know, I mean, even it's having a small booth and basically saying, hey, we know uh, that we're far out, but uh, we're still around. We want you to know we're around and certainly uh, we can answer questions and help handle other situations for you. But uh, I think not being there, I think it's a mistake myself, but, you know, I can understand not throwing a huge amount of money into a massive booth, but not being there at all, I think is a bad move or guys like david blake or peter walsh walking around at least right to, to i agree glad you know, and a little uh richard carrillo from from kiwo yolano you know, yeah that's his that's his territory and yeah the same thing with the ink companies i mean you know when i, I know that avian has its material problems and can't really deliver ink right now or not much of it, but not being there, I think is yeah, the same thing, same thing with international coatings, the same thing with any of the other ink companies. I think um, it's a mistake to not be there facing people. And of course, everybody's using COVID as their excuse. And I think it's more of an excuse than it is reality. Uh, we're doing this to keep our people safe. So how do you keep them safe when they walk in the streets or when they come into work or whether they, uh, they go into a restaurant? I mean, come on, that's, that's, I don't know. I have a tough time buying that. I, I want to stay safe without a doubt. But at the same time, uh, I'm not staying in my house and locking the door. So I don't know. To me, it doesn't make sense. But then again, who am I? We all have our uh, view of the world, I guess. We went out to a lot of um, shows with our business, um, the embroidery part for, but I, we stopped 
like 10 years ago because the price on square meters on a show quadrupled in a couple of years. So there, there is, even if we just sell, sell, sell the whole time and not talk about with anybody, we wouldn't make break even. Mm -hmm. So it got so ridiculously expensive on shows in Sweden. So how is it at your place? Is, is it um, a really expensive on the square foot or square meters on, on the floor in the different show areas? Yeah, it's been a few years since I since I bought my own, you know, Great Dane booth. But um, yeah, it's it's gone up every year just because, you know, so it gets crazy. I think costs in uh, Europe per square meter are much higher than in the U.S. Uh, when I did some of the shows in Germany and elsewhere, uh, without a doubt, the, the, the square footage was definitely much higher than what it is in the U.S. for most shows. Uh, I don't know what uh, what the Long Beach show would have been under normal circumstances. And certainly, I think Impressions is fairly high. I think um, Pretty United is probably going to be the highest, but I'm not sure. I, I, I never get a booth, so I have no idea what the actual cost is. That's in Vegas this year, right? Is that what? Hi. Yay. At yeah, least this way we'll get an there. international crowd, if nothing else. Yeah, they should just park it in Vegas and leave it. I, I totally agree, but it's always you the know, best, best shows are in Vegas for that one. You anyway. don't you don't think that it draws an international crowd in Dallas? <laughs> no, Missouri is much better. St. St. Louis or Minneapolis, I think those were awesome. Oh yeah, that's, I love that's what they should do. They should leave them there. Maybe just put it back to Minneapolis because well, Minneapolis was there. great. I mean, I, I was inducted into into uh, <laughs> the academy in Minneapolis, and I got to print. Um, King Tut on the automatic there, if you remember. Yeah. But um, yeah, the St. Louis, who, you know, I just don't understand some of it, but I, I know it's all political situations um, between the um, Printing United and the SGIA people having to put something on the East Coast, something on the West Coast. Um, the fact that they killed it off from Orlando. Uh, I didn't cry over that one. Although it would have been nice to warm up a bit, but other than that, yeah, right. not much. Anyway. New Orleans has a show ground. I've been there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But hey, New, Orleans, uh, man, New Orleans doesn't do it. People come to the party, they don't even go to the show most of the time. I don't know. Where? In New Orleans. I've never really had a good show here. Well, you know, they, they're there in the morning and then they're playing, uh, well, in the morning. They're there in the late morning because they're still hung over from the night before. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, um, you know, but even in Vegas, I mean, uh, the, the big thing in Vegas or in New Orleans or any of those, I think, is they come to do what they need to at the show and then they go to enjoy what the city has to offer, which is fine instead of just hanging around, going around endlessly and, and really just doing nothing worthwhile. Yeah, it makes but, sense. Uh, I got guys from uh, Hidden Bay on. So um, just so you know, I know you're, you're on mute right now. Um, Sean Lewis is not going to be on, but Dane is the artist that I've been working with since the, since about 93 also, isn't it? Yeah. Actually in 90, New Orleans. 90, 93, something like yeah, that. 93. Yeah, 93. So I found some old stuff from back then. I gotta, I gotta send you some <laughs> shots of it, um, including photos of you. Which <laughs> like, scary stuff. Wow, he actually used to be young at one time. But in any event, uh, I know. All you right, keep that up, old man. Yeah, <laughs> I am an old man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm yeah, but notice, I've, I've added a little something now. You notice this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Shaving it all the way down, other than my mustache, I decided I needed a new look again. My wife was bitching and moaning about it. And I said, look, by the time I shave it off, I'll look 10 years younger. And I'll only look like I'm 80 instead of 90. Nah. In any event, uh, I know I'm going to work with you guys on some separations after this thing. 
And if you've got questions, this is a good time to come up and uh, throw them out at Dane because he can definitely answer them a whole lot better than I can. Well, we'll see. Yeah, if anybody knew they came in here, I got my head down on painting. I got to try to get this <laughs> thing done today. So uh, I'm a little busy. I can multitask. What are you painting? Anything worthwhile? Uh, I just want to, I, something we got to get up on the site. Yeah, cool. okay. Kind of clean it up and almost done. So everything we do is worthwhile, though, Charlie. Come on. Yeah. Jeez. So I'm, I'm back to actually doing some real painting. Yeah, me too. Getting yeah, my hands dirty a bit. So I have a painting for you. I need to get your, um, need to decide, need to figure out how big a painting you can handle. Yeah. All right. I'm thinking of something not too big. Yeah, probably not. But um, yeah, we'll talk about that offline. Yeah. That's fine. The grandkid just popped in with candy. <laughs> anyway. Sound like they, looks like they, uh, we're here to talk to Sean, man. Second, your second string didn't do it, Charlie. No huh? small ball here, buddy. Mm -hmm. Hey, getting a bunch. I got a lot of people who want to talk to you. Oh, yeah? I do. Uh, Laura, so we've not met. Um, so the guy who is going to be on backed out, but Dane is the artist that I've worked with since 93. And um, he and I actually uh, worked on uh, Separation Studio, or which is, or it's now called Separation Studio from way back then. He is far more. Um, tuned into it than I ever will be and, and ever want to be actually, but I am good at it. Um, so if you have anything to do with screen print questions and stuff, throw them out. This is a good time to do it. Okay. Uh, I like right now, right now. <laughs> Dude. Well, I know you're doing uh, quite a bit in the way of watercolors, correct? Right. right. Well, right now we have some um, designs that are watercolors and, um, I haven't done like separations like that for screen printing before. So I just don't know the best way to do something like that. You saw kind of the, you know, you have a lot of the gradations and everything. So um, yeah. if anything you have, that would be great. Well, uh, what I did with the last one, that owl, I, I, did you do the owl? I didn't actually design it, no. Okay. Well, so that was a watercolor and I brought it into a program called Separation Studio NXT. Mm -hmm. and honestly it probably took about 15 minutes to separate it okay and all the tonal values and all that are not a problem on there i'm still learning nxt i'm i'm actually better on the previous software but uh haven't had a chance to play with nxt a, as much but it's a software program that you can download and okay. play with okay. for eight days before you have to make any kind of commitment and I so what, say, what is it doing, like, you know, in regular separations, obviously you have solid hand tone colors and these are gradations. So is it a similar process that it's doing that you would do in regular printing or how does, what is it doing? Well, so the program separates to nine colors initially, and then okay. you can add black. Um, and they are very specific Pantone colors, although the inks that I use, I don't actually mix Pantone colors. I just use them straight out of the can. But if you needed a, a specific Pantone color, we can designate that in. That's very simple. And okay, but it's nine colors, you said? No, no, no. It starts, out, it starts out that way. But then we, we can merge out three of the colors. Okay. And then anything that doesn't have a color, any box that doesn't have a color in it, we can delete. Okay. So we can usually bring it down to uh, generally no more than six colors. Okay. Okay, yeah. which is fine. One of the things that with your watercolors you may run into though, not, not, not I haven't seen anything, so I'm not sure right. how the artwork goes, but uh, if you got good hard edges, you know, or some defined edging, it'll work great. 
Um, if not, you're going to have to take that artwork. Being as a watercolor is one of the most difficult ones to remove off the background. Um, you got to take that artwork color wise, pixel for pixel, right off the paper that it's been print, uh, painted on. And so you can change the background from black to white. Well, you don't even need to do it. You just need to have it on a transparent uh, layer. No, I like it on black and white, to be honest with you. I find that much easier for me. Yeah, well, that's because you've been doing it the same way as me forever. And it just right. easy to think that way, right? But the software, yes. as long as it's on a transparent layer, it's going to add the white and the black background and do the steps on its own. Well, um, when you say when you say I have to get rid of the, you're saying I have to get rid of the white in order to have that transparency? You're going to have to take your artwork, whatever it is, mm -hmm. off the white paper. If it's watercolor paper that's been painted on, I'm just assuming, I don't know. Um, whatever it's been painted on, imagine if it needs to, in order for it to be done for, let's put it this way. If it's just a white shirt, not a problem. No sweat, just leave it like it is and go. Right. If you want to try to take that print and print it on colored shirts or anything like that, any color shirt, right? Uh, the artwork needs to be on a transparent layer. Um, because the way the software works, it's going to take, uh, it'll, it'll, like Charlie said, he likes his on a white background and a black background when he's working with it. So the white background is going to give you all the colors and your black printer, right? Your black ink, um, as far as your screen goes. And then the black background is going to actually, the black background is going to give you your colors. The white one's going to give you your black. And then, uh, you got to be able to switch it to get your your white ink your white base is going to come in off the black as well so well so so charlie you saw what and again yes. i didn't, didn't actually design these they just <laughs> want me to help kind of get it um separated so those have um kind of this we put a design like a faded kind of design on the not really faded it's kind of, kind of a splatter effect so but it's in white which is kind of part of the artwork. So I don't know how to make a transparency with what they've given me because it's not like something that I can outline. They don't want to. They don't want a sharp outliner on it. They want it kind of. Um, they want it to fade out. Sure. Yeah. So that's where I'm kind of like I have no idea. How to do that. What do you, so do you think the program could? figure out a way to do that. I mean, well, the program could, being another layer. yeah, but somehow we have to get it either on a transparent or on a black background. Um, I mean, I can get it transparent and Photoshop that, you know, the outside of the splatter part is transparent behind that, but, but it's still white um, that I'm the, dealing with. The, is it, do you have the watercolors like a fading into the paper in the backgrounds or is there a defined edge, even if it's a splatter, Right, I can take a watercolor brush and throw a little dot, and as long I'll see those little, you know, that little dot has a defined edge. Is it is it that, or is it really wet paper and just letting it all dissipate out into the paper, nice no, and soft? No, the the white. So it's a white splatter that's around it. This is the effect that they they kind of like. And then there's another design that has more of a, and that one I can do transparent. But the one with the splatter design that they like um, is, you know, there it's little white splatters so i mean i suppose yes and then there's transparent behind that it's complex so for a t-shirt at least yeah so can you see richard's little square there and I'm, I'm looking at the gallery view you see that black and that black and uh, orange black and yeah black and orange uh, fish right splatters mm -hmm. like that with little hard defined edges that sort of thing no no not so much <laughs> yeah it's hard to so describe hard. i know i wish i could see it but, uh, I know, i'm trying to think uh, if i know how to if i could figure out how to share i'm, I'm not like an expert on zoom so i'm not sure how to share something on here um charlie's gonna give you permission uh, you know I can get open. Yeah. all i can say is see if what you can do about either getting it on if you can get it on a transparent background um what, Dane, what do you think the best way to save it is as a TIFF or what? Um, I mean, TIFF or a PNG, it doesn't matter. Okay. okay. So if you, uh, I like working off of a TIFF. So if you save it as, a, if you save it as a TIFF, I'll see what I can do with it afterwards, and then you and I can uh, work the program at the same time. If you download it on your end, I'll have it on my end, and we can walk our way okay. through. Okay. And so TIFFs, do TIFFs have transparent backgrounds? Yes. Yes. You can save it with transparency okay. when you save a file. 
Yeah, if we really run into problems, we'll call Dane. <laughs> yeah, he, he usually does, so we're good. <laughs> I do, absolutely. <laughs> you know, I made the mistake back when, I, when he first jumped on Photoshop and stuff. I didn't because he did. Bad move on my side. I pay the price for that all the time. And the funny thing is he goes all over the world showing people how to do stuff. And he calls me or emails me or texts me at all times and say, hey, I got to get through this. And I'm like, it's in my book. <laughs> but listen, if someone asked me to do a box in Illustrator, I wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> you know, even with Photoshop, I mean, I know how to manipulate up to a certain point and then I'm lost. I mean, I have to admit my computer skills are beyond bad but I know how to manipulate enough to get the things that I need out of it. And when that's I don't, the, I call him. Yeah. <laughs> that's what, that's what friends are for, right? That's right. Exactly. It's the price he pays because I had to train him back when he was a youngster. Ah, oh, there you go. That's true. <laughs> Long before the gray beard. Yeah. Way before that. Yeah. How's your wife feeling by the way? She's good. She's out of it. Yeah, she pretty much. She's uh. Still sucking a little wind every now and again, you know, it gets wind. It's going to take a while. We had friends who um, took well over a month to get over it. Yeah. And are still having their day-to-day -day kind of issues. Right. Yeah, but she's good. We're good. Uh, hey, Jack, where are you from? Boston. There you go. Jack, what company are you with? Can't hear you. you you're on mute. Nope, not that. There Still you look, go. There you go. All right. Uh, Jurassic Prince. I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, okay. I was just curious more than anything else. Can we answer any questions for you? Uh, no, not at the moment. Just listening in. All right. Well, just checking in with you. Thank Rocky, you. How are you doing? Have you changed anything since you got back from the show? Well, we've tried to do some of the things you taught us and it's not working out yet. We'll keep <laughs> Hasn't worked out yet. We'll keep at it. Yeah. What do you think of the show since you were there as an attendee? Well, it was, it was better than I was afraid it would be, but it wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. Well, but it was, I, I understand that it was certainly the size of the show was far smaller than it usually is, but it was still bigger than any show I've done. But um, they were definitely missing certain attendees, the ink companies and, and the machine companies for the most part. Yeah, I came there with a shopping list and I didn't get to buy anything I was looking for. Oh, well, talk to me. I can help you spend your money. <laughs> what do you what are you looking for? Oh, I, I was number one thing I was going to get was a, a flashback from my workhorse, and there was nobody there. For my workhorse. Yeah, so no I, one from workhorse was there. Yeah, and I don't think uh, I think the only machine company with an automatic that was there was uh, Rock. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I think that was a bad move by the other companies, but that's just an opinion. I think they bailed expecting it to be canceled or something because of the whole COVID surge. Honestly, I know a lot well, of people bailed back or just didn't go. You know, um, the attendance overall really wasn't too bad. I mean, you know, like I said, I think those who showed up were there pretty seriously, but yeah, <clears throat> there was no way that uh, Impressions was going to back out again. Well, you know, that's still their biggest show. And uh, even if they didn't have um, a whole lot of people, at least they were there. <clears throat> so to that end, um, they got the ball rolling. Be interesting to see. Uh, I know in, uh, where I am, uh, all of the counties are now eliminating their mask mandate, as did New Jersey as well. So uh, the Atlantic City show could be pretty interesting in that sense. <coughs> yeah, that'd be great. Huh? That'd be great. Well, as speakers up front, we didn't have to wear a mask because 
I don't know about you, but I can't hear anyone from 10 feet away wearing a yeah, mask. Right. And it's like, really? You know, pull it down, tell me what you want to say, and then put it back up if you want. But um, I didn't come down with anything. So I guess everybody who was in my sessions was uh, clean. Did you send away for those free uh, home test kits? Yes. Got mine yesterday. Hopefully they're a little more uh, reliable than what you could buy in the store. No, same crapola. Just huh? <laughs> Flip the coin. You know, you got a quarter in your pocket. That's about it. Well, I don't know. I don't know what these new ones are like, but oh well. In any event. Um, I don't know what they, you know, they're pushing those things, but one, they're not very reliable, right? Like you were, were questioning, but you can't use them to get into the show, right? So they're not <coughs> no, they had a, uh, for any of that, you got to get had a, a booth set up. If you, if you weren't vaccinated, then uh, you had to take the test there. I think it was 40 bucks for, to take the test. Did they have those tests there at the show on site? They had them outside of the convention center, right? At, right there are only two entryways in. Yeah. And uh, if you were, and they checked you, and if you didn't, right next to them was a uh, a stand set up to do the testing. Cool. I don't know what they're doing in New Jersey, but uh, you know California definitely had uh, tighter laws. And when we did uh, Atlantic City back in August, they didn't have any of that. So I'm assuming that. Uh, and, and I understand Atlantic City is going to be uh, without a mask mandate, so I can't imagine that they're going to have anything set up in terms of testing. Hmm. We'll see. Yeah. Still, uh, what, a month and about seven weeks away, so six weeks, something like that. See what happens. You'll be here before we know it. I know. Time flies when you're having fun. Yeah. So I, I did an interesting, uh, at my uh, workshop, I did a four color process one. And back in the day, Fred Clark gave me a set of prints that had four, uh, four of the same image on it. Uh, each one with a different set of angles, except one that had all, that had everything yeah. at four angles. So I, if you remember, I had uh, several yep. steps redo that for me in a similar manner, except I went four angles, three angles, two angles, one angle. And so um, that's what we printed in the four color process workshop. But what was really interesting, I read Kaz's article on uh, thin coating. And so I coated my screens with a single coat. They're all 305s, single coat on the outside. And I was using the new uh, emulsion from Chromaline, the Hydro X. Have you played with that at all, Richard? No. So th they designed it for LED systems and it's water resistant. I gave it a single coat, dried it. My exposure time on a Vastex unit was four seconds. And then you do a post exposure that's three to four times as long as your normal exposure. So that was 16 seconds. Not a pinhole to be seen, not a breakdown to be seen, which I thought it was pretty awesome. And I, I know I was holding below 5% dots. Nice. So I'm right. going to do that again in Atlantic City. Other than the fact that I have to get my screens clean before then. It was one of those deals of, uh, I should really send them downstairs and have uh, easy way clean them. Never got around to it. So uh, I guess that's the first thing my, my workshop is going to do is clean screens, but <laughs> why not? It's always fun. But uh, the results were pretty interesting, I thought. Uh, you know, I, I had that thing from Fred Clark for years and years before it kind of dawned on me to just try one angle. And uh, he was innovative. He's the best. Yeah. But it was kind of fun to... Uh, still have some of the things that I got from him. Dean, I have a question. 
Okay, sí. When you do distressed, look, do you have um, a pre-made um, picture on top of it or do you work by a certain brush and make it by hand? Um, I got a bunch of saved tips. You know, usually I'll just drop them on top in Illustrator when I'm doing my printing out my steps. Um, but I've made them with brushes. I've made them with the, oh, what is it? The fiber tool or something in Photoshop. I haven't done that in a while. What's the name of it? Somewhere in here. Yeah, render fibers. That one's pretty cool. Um, mm -hmm. it, it actually works pretty well. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I guess whatever I got, whatever time frame I'm under, the kind of thing. You know, I use my brushes mostly if I got a photograph and I got to get rid of the outside edges, right? So it blends in the shirt. Uh, that way I can control exactly how much I want to lose, you know, wherever it is. I mean, I don't, I don't do like just a soft edge all the way around it and I'm done. I, I like to work that edge so it looks uh, really nice. Okay, get it. Yeah, I put an order in to Missio about these patriotic flags, all the different distressed models that you have, but you only have the American flag. We want a lot of other flags as well. <laughs> Did you, you, you sent it in to her? So yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. Which ones are you looking for? Oh, uh, mainly the Swedish first then. <laughs> so I can, I can do for our teams, but then we have a lot, another team, teams coming up and because um, the pickleball uh, the design yeah. I work with a lot now and Good. we have the tennis and uh, if I can have some cool looking patriotic flags to go along with it as well for the different teams it would be fantastic right yeah, yeah. not a problem I'll, I'll check with her make sure she's, it's not on our list because if you give it to her we'll try to get to it you know that we'll, yeah yeah we'll... yeah you quick and good we try yeah Um, this is Caitlin from Hidden Bay Graphics. Um, we have a couple of questions. Our team has a couple of questions regarding the halftones. Okay. Um, the first is from a production standpoint. Um, we're wondering if using 230 versus 300 screens will, will help in terms of getting the best possible quality out of our halftone artwork. Here's a very double-edged question <laughs> <laughs> that's why we're asking <laughs> um because i mean we could do a couple of samples ourselves but i think just from your professional standpoint what would you recommend in in terms of which screen to use and i mean if there is an instance where one is better than the other what would that look like Don't everybody jump in at the same time now. Well, there you go. We we were waiting, waiting on Charlie. You. Huh? So what you waiting on? I'll give you I'll give a, a quick a quick two seconds on my side and then I'll let you and Richard jump in, right? So so um I guess living example. Obviously, uh, logically I would say, well, I'm gonna do a 300, 300 or 305 or whatever, I can hold smaller details and print better half tones because of the smaller openings and all that sort of thing than a 230, right? So that's the first thing you're gonna think. The problem is when you do that, it becomes that much harder to hold and control uh, and manage those half tones on press. So for instance, we did this, we, I was at a consulting, when I used to consult with Charlie years ago and I'm trying to think of where it was, I don't remember, um, but we're, we're probably in Jamaica, I think I was at Ray's place. So they had a bunch of fine art pieces, right? Artwork pieces that they shot and, they, and it was beautiful artwork. I mean, really, really nice. And they said, we want to print this stuff. So we want to do it half tones and we're going to three, you know, 305 matches or maybe even higher, I can't remember. Um, and I'm like, mm, man, let's don't do that yet. I don't think that's where, where, where we should go. Oh no, yeah, we got to do this. We had to have the best prints possible. So we did it. And the problem is they couldn't control it throughout the rest of the process, right? So by the time we printed it, 
Do we had dot gain? We had all kinds of problems because they, the mesh and the exposures were all wrong, right? So I said, let's just do something here and let's just go back to the 230s and we're going to print it. Um, and we did, you know, probably a 50 line halftone because they wanted to get as tight as they could. Uh, and it worked so much better. Uh, so, I mean, if your shop has the capabilities of holding a high halftone count um, and working those smaller, then great, I would use it because, you know, Lon Winters, for example, I mean, he can print anything you want to throw at him, right? But there's very few shops that have that capability. So um, I would be careful with it. I don't know that it's necessary. You know, I, I, I've watched it several times. That's just one that jumps out to me. So uh, that's my two cents. Richard, you want to jump in? You want me to jump on? How how have you determined what's the smallest half tone that you can print? Because if you start with 50 line half tones and move to 60, as you progress, can you produce 5% dots? Because your, your things will look better if they have good detail. And then when you're printing them, have you controlled your dot gain? with linearization, meaning you want to print a 5% dot, you tell Photoshop or Illustrator, I want a 5% dot, you need to be able to measure what size dot you actually get on a shirt. When you put it in an inkjet film, or you put it into a CTS, it always gets a little larger. And what you need is a controlled move from 5% to 95%. And so you need the biggest dots that you can start with, or you need to start with bigger dots to work your way down to 60 or maybe 70 line per inch dots. I've always loved 60 because it breaks perfectly into 300 DPI or 600 DPI. It's just mathematically more sophisticated than 65 line that was based on a, a, a European system of photographic separations had nothing to do with computers at all. And alas, that's more work, but first you have to calibrate to see whether or not you can print a good spectrum of balanced dots. And for that, you need to maybe share with Charlie by sending him your positive or sending me your positives so I can measure your dots and see whether or not your 40% dot is really a 40% dot when you print it. You know, uh, one of the things that I do push hard is to have a calibration bar on all your artwork that you're oh, outputting. And this way, you know, I usually start a calibration bar at 5%, but I, I know Andy Anderson, for example, started his calibration bar at a 3% dot because of uh, his capabilities. Part of it is seeing how much you're actually able to hold on screen before you even worry about what you can print. And so having a calibration bar is definitely part of it. You know, you see some great stuff online. People are doing 90 LPI work that, uh, you know, when I, when I work with MIDI prints, they're doing 150 line half tone work, but they're also using image setters to do their, their separations. And so uh, they're getting a very hard round dot or whatever, elliptical dot. Um, I'm still a fan of you start out at 45 line half tone, see what you can hold. Yeah. And then from 45, move up to 55 and then move up to 65 and work your way up to where your capabilities are. But you won't know until you actually um, until you actually do try it. Even in printing, uh, a lot of it comes down to the press operator the squeegees they're using, the angles they're using, the pressure they're using, the speed that they're using are all factors in that. And then Richard can always send you a rundown of, of his article. Oh, that's before he was, that, that that's, that's even without a beard and mustache. I mean, come on. But I think all of us have written articles over the years on working with four color process or simulated process. And are they the same? They're very different. Four color process is definitely the most challenging. Um, your dot gain will be worse there uh, because it'll show more often. On simulated process, your dot gain is there, but it really doesn't seem to affect the image as severely. Um, I actually like to 
probably. do a number of prints before I get into a production run so that I can then be more consistent. Um, I mean, but, but there are a lot of factors, but certainly holding the image on screen is, is number one priority. And then from there, moving on. Did that answer your question? A little bit. Yes, I think it puts us in the, in a, in the right direction in terms of how our shop in particular is going to, you know, come, come at this. So I appreciate that. As a okay, librarian. Well, I'm going to be working with you guys right after this, I think, unless you guys are not coming up by staying on. No, we are. Yeah, we're definitely going to be staying. So we okay. can get a little more detail during that time. Great. I put my email address for all of you. I put my email address in the chat. And remind me what you're asking for, but I'll send you four linearization articles. One, the great one by Michelle Caza, which if you have the energy to read all 36 pages. Fine line, half tone maybe, reproduction. You can, you can also <laughs> read the shorter one by, by uh, Mark Coudre, which is only about three or four pages. And then the two articles that I, I had in the, I just happened to have in this binder that I pulled out the other day. They're from the early eighties, but they show how, what you, how to test using control guides. Now, oh. people come up to me at shows. I'm sure they come up to all of you, Dane, Charlie, and they say, what do you think of my art? And it's like asking, what do you think of my new baby boy? Yes, yeah. it looks fabulous. Yes. But <laughs> what did the original look like? What are you trying to reproduce? So quality is in the eye of the person who's paying the bill. So it may be that what you want is to be able to print finer lines or richer color, where you want to be able to print full color process on black, that's not easy. So interesting thing in my workshop, I mentioned Joe Clark's uh, book, um, Color Without Confusion. Control somebody Without pulled, Confusion. Somebody pulled it up on Amazon. What do you think it's selling for on Amazon? 70, 80 bucks. $3,000. 3000 okay. So I said, I would be happy to sell my copy for 2,500 <laughs> to save you 500 bucks. <laughs> but uh, trying yeah, but to get Charlie a hold of it. up there for 3,000. I mean, it's kind of, it's like, it, it, I, I thought it was a joke. So I pulled it up online. I punched in Amazon, fine line, uh, you know, uh, color without confusion, $3,000. So I don't know who has it, but whoever does have it is trying to make a their, their livelihood out of selling that book. I need to get in touch with ST Publications, see if they still have any. <laughs> they don't have any more. I have four wrapped in plastic versions. They're behind the green screen here. Well, there you go. You can sell them off. You just made a mint. You can sell them off for a little under 3,000 a piece and, and be a <laughs> hero. Or if you send me an email, I'll send you a PDF of Control Without Confusion. Which is absolutely worth having. I, I don't care who it is. That's definitely one that you should have in your, in your repertoire. So send me an email. So there you go. You know what, I'm, why don't you, uh, I'll, I'll email you, you can send me a copy because every time I go around to shops, I'm always in talking about it and you can't buy it anymore. So. Yeah, I haven't been able to buy it for ages. I know, well, I, you know, having had a copy, I never looked into it. So it was one of those things. Oh, well. Your, your wife just uh, slid behind you. And you're on mute, I can't. Uh, that was Pam, my wife is working. Oh, so quick question, is she setting up faster now? No. <laughs> Wrapped in plastic, untouched. There you go. Perfect. For Thirty-five years. I know. Mine sits on the shelf. It's in great shape. I don't know if I've cracked the cover on it. I don't know, Rocky. One of these days, I need to pop up to your shop. I I desperately need help because I tried to set up yesterday and um, I it was horrible. And I haven't set up since. <laughs> I'm <laughs> 
But yeah, I, I'll, I'll always set up faster than you, but I ain't doing it right. So. so I have a question. How come she was able to get that screen and register during my workshop so easily? Uh, good question. If I could figure that out, then we can get faster here. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, you know. I'll do it your way, not the way Rock is telling me to do it. Well, there you go. You do it my way. Disregard what he has to say. <laughs> have a good one. Oh, well. Yeah, I've, I've got something going on that I can't understand where my underbase is peeking out at both the top and the bottom. It's, that's that's a screen tension problem. It's that's what I figured. So we we are in no, the it's, okay. when it comes out of both sides, it's screen tension. That means your screen has uh, dropped tension and has expanded. Yeah. So we're redoing all of our screens. That's what Pam's doing back there now is adjusting tension on all of our roller frames. You know, um, even with roller frames, you still have to control it. And uh, <clears throat> I mean, I love them. And, you know, it, it's just the maintenance that people don't do. And so they, they kind of give away the advantage of the roller frame. Um, as soon as you see something where it's on both ends, yep. it's absolutely a tension problem. That screen has lost too much tension. But well, we're, we're reburning screens now. <clears throat> Unfortunately, because our, our dark room is so small, we don't have enough room to store multiple screens. So every time something doesn't work, it's another day's worth of reclaiming, requoting, and- so, so do you have a heated drying cabinet? Yes. You should be able to dry a screen in about 15 minutes. Yeah, I don't think we've done ours right. I'm gonna build a new one. I'll send you the plans again. Well, I've got, I've got the ones you sent. Oh, well then, you know, uh, if that's too, if that one's too big, just cut it in half. Right. That's but, another. Uh, one. At literally, it's a fifteen-minute dry. You know, obviously, um, you don't want to be under the gun all the time. But if you don't have enough space, you got to do something so that you do have some in inventory. I I need to on my list of things to do is building more storage cabinets, so we can coat the screens and have them in there, and that way, if we lose the screen on press, we can go right to another screen. So. And you should be able to do that. Absolutely. We're working. Question, question on that. Sure. Um, are Your films are good, though? They match? Yeah, my films are good. That's the first thing I did was check the film. They match. So that's, yeah, what that's the first thing you should do. Yeah. Yeah, because I was also going to ask, like, what you're outputting your films on. Uh, Epson 1430. Yeah. Because tracking can go bad on those things. Yeah. They're using sheets or rolls? Say again, sheets. Okay. The, sh the sheets are definitely less of an issue than the rolls are. Yeah. The, the rolls tend to stretch a bit more, especially as they get smaller. Yeah. And uh, that's why a lot of people have gone over to the three inch interior instead of the two inch. So there's a little bit less stress on it. But the sheets generally don't have as much of an issue. That doesn't mean you can't, but uh, that's that's in general. And certainly the first thing you should do is check your artwork uh, to see if it all matches up correctly before you even look at your screens. If, if your artwork is off, then everything else is gone anyway. Yep. And then of course you do an autopsy on that particular screen that was peeking out of both sides. Yeah. Once you clean the screen, you take that back in and see if the image still matches the positive. Okay. Then you'll, then at least you'll look and go, ah, you know, right, the, the fibers elongated, they lost tension, and that means that the image gets larger. Yeah. Okay. You know, it's interesting when you, when we were at Andy Anderson's shop, everyone in his shop carries a, a 10 power loop, and everything they set up and everything they check is all with a loop rather than just by eye, because a fraction off by eye, you may not see it, but when you have a close up 10 power, even five power, you can tell immediately if you have an actual issue or not. And, you know, too many companies I go into, almost all, it's like you have a loop and it's like, yeah, the art department has it. Great. What about out on press? What about somebody who has to see if everything is actually in proper register? And it's like, well, we look at it and it's like, uh-huh, you have eyes that are, I mean, look, I'm at the point where I can't see a damn thing anymore. 
Uh, but even, even when I had quote unquote decent eyes, you can't possibly, when you have a half point line lined up with another half point line, you know, by eye, it's impossible to really see if they're dead on the money. And so that is definitely part of it. Does that answer your question, Jack? Yeah, yeah. I was more just uh, asking on on him and just if he's checking his films as well. Yeah, I definitely checked the films. Yeah. You know, I, I find myself going into shops, uh, pushing him to buy a series of loops now, so that uh, they can actually see what the hell they're doing. Some do, some don't. I mean, it's a ten dollar item or something like that. It's kind of stupid to not have. Them. Matter of fact, that shows if they get back to normal. Uh, there are a number of companies who just give them away. I know M&R had at one time, Chromaline had, uh, NASDAR did, I don't know who else, but um, they're so inexpensive. Buying a good metal one is no big deal, kind of folds up and you just keep it in your pocket. Oh, well. Rocky, where is he at? Where are you, where you shop at? Dallas, Texas. And the only show he doesn't go to is the one that's in Texas. Too close to home, I guess, huh? I'm usually out of town doing that show. I'm usually on the road. Yeah, well, I think being on the road is a lot more fun than being home. You get to kick oh. around in the evenings, but. Can't, hey, I can't fish on the road. I can fish right about there, though. Yeah, well. That's why I like to stay home these days. Well, do yeah, but I you're work, you're at least in your in, in your studio working, so that's good. I am. I've so actually been cranking so away myself. Yeah, uh, I keep trying to finish up this damn book that I'm on, and it gets more confusing the more the closer I get to being finished. They're, they're not easy, are they? It's a boat oh, of work, man. I need I need to chat with you about it one of these days. All right, but we're getting close on my dice up book. That's we'll have it for Atlantic City, but man, it's just been there's so much work involved. You know, every time you think you're done, you find something else that should be in there, and it, it's kind of like, at what point do you just call it quits? Yep. The only one I'm having fun with is on, <clears throat> not not the technical one, but the other one that I'm writing on uh, my years in the industry. Digging, <clears throat> digging through some of the old photos and artwork and uh, <laughs> magazine article. I mean, that's been fun. It's frightening at times as well. You need to uh, you need to take that that big collection of show badges you have and make sure that like that's featured somewhere on a cover or something. I have a box that is loaded to the brim. That's got to be um, about foot and a half by foot and a half by a foot and a half and I can't fit any more badges into it. Yeah. My wife keeps wanting me to throw them out though. Well, go upstairs, keep it in the basement. Well, that, they are. These are my recent ones. <laughs> You're gonna send them to me and I run them through my automatic scanner. You know what? It'll, it'll certainly be a, a, uh, a blizzard day of um, scanning. I'll send them to you. I don't have a problem with it. I mean, I, you know, um, some of them in there are from way, way, way back in the early 80s. Um, of course, not everybody put dates on there. So some of them look like the same type of thing over and over again. But uh, between the seminars and workshops that I've done, there's, there are hundreds and hundreds in there. One of these days. I'll send them to you if you want them, though. You want to scan them? My, be my guest. Anyway, if, any, if no one else has any questions or has anything to put out there, I'm going to shut this down. The, uh, we did record this, so if anybody does want to catch the recording, it'll be on my website. Um, should be posted probably in the next day or two, as, as well as most of the other ones that I've uh, done. But uh, in any event, gentlemen and women and ladies, um, 
been interesting having you on and uh, going to do it again in two weeks. I'm not sure if I can get Sean on at any point, but may give it another try. Uh, I'll have to speak to him and see about it. But um, yeah, bailing out with three minutes to go was kind of like, really? Okay. Like I said, I love Sean it. always had a problem. That was time. <laughs> and he just proved it today. So, oh, well. I, I just put my email in again. I accidentally sent it as a direct message to Sheehan, and he was the only guy that got it. Uh, um, so it's in there. It's rgreaves at gmail.com. Um, there you go. Yeah, Sheehan, this is perfect for, you know, that whole uh, download is perfect for your school. So definitely yeah, take it. advantage of it. Yeah, anyway, please. I do this every every other Tuesday. Um, sometimes we have very few. Sometimes we have a decent turnout. But uh, you know, if any of you has any has any topic that you want me to go after, or any particular individual, I've been trying to get Andy Anderson on for the longest time. But Andy is the type of guy who shies away from all of this. But I'm going to catch him one of these times. Uh, but if you do have any anyone or any uh, topic that you want, I can certainly pull together enough people on that. We gave Andy a life achievement award at the impression show. I know that, and he's he was absolutely the right person to get it. Which one? Which show? Long Beach. Oh, they did uh, it already. Yeah. Ah. Uh, Jamar asked Rick Roth, and Rick Roth pointed me as a as the head judge along with Marsha Derryberry and Michelle Moxley. And it, it was probably a five minute conversation when I called Marsha and when I called uh, Michelle. And I said, I'm voting for Andy Anderson. Oh, that's perfect. Awesome, yeah, a, I agree. It was a 10 minute- I agree, there's nobody else that should have, <laughs> yeah, there's no one else that really even came yeah, close. Man. I put my website on here if, if anybody wants to go to it uh, to catch this or to make any suggestions or whatever. Uh, you can also email me. Um, and that's my email. So if you have a topic or if you have a, a person that you'd like me to try and get to, be happy to do it. Other than that, gentlemen, thank you all. And ladies, thank you all very much for being on. And, uh, Guys from Hidden Bay, stay on. I'm going to uh, right. shut down and, and come back on to this. Charlie, I Charlie, I think you did a direct message too because I don't see your website. What was that? It may be that you did the same thing I did and did a direct message instead of everyone. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm gay. I believe consulting.com. You know, you're asking me to mess around <laughs> on a computer. My computer skills just don't, don't go in those directions, but all right. <laughs> uh, Dane, I'll, I'll chat with you. I, I have a couple of questions, but I'll do that later in the day or tomorrow, whatever. Yeah, no worries. All yeah, right. Waiting, waiting for guys. a snowstorm to hit here, which is due late in the day. So we'll see what happens. Right. Anyway, thanks so much, guys. Have a good one. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. See you.